<laughs> Podcast video is live. Okay, I'm going to start talking. And I think this is being recorded. For a conversation starter, I'm going to read chapter 20 from the Shambhala Principle. The chapter title is Unconditional Healthiness. One day, I began sneezing. My father turned to me and asked what was wrong, and I said, I think I have hay fever. He looked at me and said, we Tibetans don't get hay fever. I contemplated this. I thought it was rather an insensitive thing to say. There was no doubt a mixture of cultural pride and spiritual wisdom in his words. Tibetans come from hardy stock and it didn't seem inconsequential to complain about hay fever to a man who had walked out of the Himalayas. I smiled and laughed at his answer. That's better, he said. My father told me I needed to stop fighting the elements and relax. This required me to surrender my concept of hay fever and abruptly switch my allegiance to the present moment. Then my father transmitted a very important of psychosomatic wisdom. He told me I should trust my basic healthiness. He said that while sickness is part of life, sickness is not life, and that I should always approach sickness from the point of view of healthiness. I knew he knew what he was talking about since in his travels he had experienced starvation and frostbite as well as several tropical diseases. My father's approach to health was connected with the physical manifestation of basic goodness. He was saying that if I could leap beyond my convoluted thinking process, I would find that worthy feeling. At a psychophysical level, it is the notion of complete healthiness. Humanity is fundamentally healthy. If its nature were not fundamental health, the species could not survive. The Shabala principle thus advocates that at a physical level we are unconditionally healthy and at a psychological level we are also unconditionally healthy. We are intact and our nature as humans is profoundly good. Otherwise, how could we experience the joy of a long run or a child smiling? From this inherently good health we have the power to make sound decisions. Over the years, my father's words have begun to haunt me. As a modern culture, we are beginning to lose faith in the healthiness of humanity, which means we believe in a culture of unhealthiness. Because we have polluted and overpopulated the earth, air quality and the water supply are dwindling, and as technology threatens to overwhelm us, we will no doubt continue to encounter new illnesses and diseases, and therefore we'll will need to develop more medicines. On the other hand, this is a medical issue. On the other hand, it is a cultural issue. If humanity develops the attitude that unhealthiness is our nature, we will be more susceptible to illness because just holding that attitude will weaken our immune systems. For myself, there have been times when I felt sick and was able to feel better by changing the environment, by going to bed, or by associating with different people. Simply by creating a healthier environment, I created a healthier attitude also. There are mal maladies <laughs> far more serious than hay fever, but even when things seem incurably bad, we can remain incurably good. If this age of plague, famine, and war gains the upper hand and we forget our goodness, we could find ourselves in a vulnerable position both physically and mentally. Our healthcare system is at a crossroads created by the confluence of economy, the environment, society, and health. Likewise, the health of our species naturally affects our relationship with the environment, the economy, and society. All these personal and social elements mix. They all melt within the cauldron of our personal well-being. The attempt to become more progressive with technology and information naturally takes a toll on our humanity. It's a simple universal law that the more we create, the more we have to manage, and the more stress is placed on our mind and body. 
If we are advancing at a rate that outpaces our ability to handle the accompanying stress, we need to self-reflect. Is this truly progress? Even though modern medicine seems almost miraculous and taking pills might temporarily counteract the mounting pressure, the most beneficial approach for the future is to balance the stress equally with the sense of fundamental healthiness. The word, the word health indicates a feeling of being complete in balance and in harmony, free of disease and suffering. It indicates vitality, the faculties are alive and working. Therefore, health is the life force within us that makes us human, and to have strong life force is a completely natural part of being human. The Shambhala principle emphasizes a sense of health based on a natural connectivity and interdependence. Being healthy and maintaining health is not related just to diet and exercise, but with how we eat and with whom we eat and how we relate to our body through movement. Even if we eat healthy and organic foods, if we are surrounded by aggressive and speedy society and feel numb to our feelings, our total health is not being addressed. If personally or socially we are forgetting, the nurture, forgetting to nurture the human spirit, then naturally we will feel a dampening of the spirit of our health. We will begin to feel that we are somehow flawed, which decreases our self-esteem. This in turn affects our vitality, illness, and disease increase, and we end up thinking that ill health, not fundamental healthiness, is natural. In a society that encourages us to feel our natural healthiness, our relationship to life's natural challenges is more balanced. The Shambhala approach to healthiness begins at an inner level by being kind to ourselves, appreciating what we eat through mindfulness, exchanging with others through empathy, resting with our fears, and allowing our minds to have dreams. On the outer level, it encourage respect, encourages respect for human dignity, even though we are all prone to being born, growing old, aging, sickness, and death. We can approach life's vicissitudes from the reference point of goodness, whether we are healthy or ill. In this way, basic goodness becomes our cosmic health care. Inevitably, we will become ill, but that does not prevent us from touching our basic goodness. The day does not have to be perfect in order for us to feel a sense of celebration. Thus, even illness becomes a way to discover our treasure which allows us to celebrate being alive. So that is the chapter, Unconditional Healthiness, from Sakyong Mipam's book, The Shambhala Principle. I hope you enjoyed that reading. <laughs>